for the moment, anyway. Bloody hell, someone's been tweeting at me a lot. Um, another naval battle. This is the Canadians versus the German submarines. The Canadians are actually doing some fleet protection now, which is good to see. Have the Canadian Navy actually woken up? They are... Strike fleet. Yes, they have. They are doing escort convoy with submarines. No, that's not how this works. Sardinia has been exiled again. So somebody counter-attacked into Sardinia, I guess. I was about to give Canada some kudos for actually protecting fleets, but they're not. They're just accidentally catching enemy ships, basically. Uh, meanwhile, Paris is still in French hands. France is very doggedly holding on to that. Let's just click over to Germany for a moment because I really want to see what the losses are. Germany, so the Reichspact, have lost 11.8 million troops in this conflict alone. 4.8 of them from Germany, 1.2 from Austria, 588,000 from Bulgaria, 1.9 million from the Ukraine. Meanwhile, the Entente against them have lost 1.46 million. Uh, because most of them have not been called in. Or is Muscat on? No, sorry, Muscat's on the... Weirdly, is on their side. Oh dear, Walter Modell has just fallen ill. French Republic lost 195,000, 1.4 million total. 400,000 from the United States, 600,000 in India. Third International has lost 6.4 million. Common in France at 2.6. Italy at 1.5. Co-Prosperity have lost 4 million. 3.2 from Russia. 100,000 from Siam, 800,000 from China, 200,000 from Japan, 100,000 in the Philippines. So, yeah, Germany is definitely leaving this beaten and bloodied. And even if they don't get the victory point, uh, victory, they will definitely get the moral victory because good grief they're putting up a dogged fight. Argentina flipped a victory point in Bolivia from the Entente de Reichs Pact, which had them briefly tied before the fall of London. Ah, I see. Does anyone in the game know how to do Navy? The only one that I've seen, even with a reasonably... Australasia, I'd say, does. Like, Australasia's done a pretty good job with their fleet. And possibly, uh, Union of Britain. I would have liked to have seen more from Union of Britain, but I get that they're low on fuel, basically, throughout. Uh, but those two are the only ones that have really kind of stuck out as competent naval. How's the Ukraine's manpower? I mean, it should be fine. Ukraine has a lot of... Oh, they're on all that out serve. It's because they gave all of this land up. I mean, granted, Ukraine has held marvelously against Russia, but I don't know if that's necessarily a good use of their troops, because there are so many of them here. I guess they're basically facing off against the same number across the river. Has the Ukraine only been fighting Russia? Russia's killed 2.1 million Ukrainians. And how many has Ukraine lost and is it just against Russia? Ukraine's lost 1.9 million, 600, 700,000 against Russia, 300,000 against China, 250 against... No, they have been elsewhere. Okay. Of course, it's the power drops. That's where they've been losing units. Meanwhile, there is one hell of a surround here. That's 3, 6, 7, 18, 19, 26, 27, 28, 29 divisions in this pocket alone about to be eradicated. While there's 24, 5, 6, 27 in this pocket as well. Um, Cope Row is about to take a huge amount of casualties because they were kind of caught snoozing. They took a fair chunk of Germany and then just kind of stopped. Again, maybe they lost air superiority so didn't want to attack anything? I don't know. Meanwhile, Paris still hasn't fallen. And the river south of Nantes is a last ditch defense by the French forces trying to hold off against the Indian Huzzah. hordes, the Australasian hordes, the American hordes, and also the Canadian hordes, and probably also some Aussies. Showed up, maybe, with a beer in hand. <sighs> 
Didn't I say I like the Swedish naval game? Yeah, that's true. I like the fact that Sweden actually did some, like, research. So, okay, three, three navals. Sweden, Australasia, and Union of Britain. And I would say that Australasia has probably had the biggest bearing. I also like the fact that, actually, you know what, Germany didn't do terrible for somebody who did nothing with the navy. Uh, their use of the navy, or saving the navy for that huge naval invasion of, uh, Union of, of, yeah, Union of Britain was decent. I would have liked to have seen them using their fleet, like, more consistently throughout, but again, that is a drain on resources, so I kind of get why, and if their grand plan was to do this big naval invasion, fine. I also like the use of the, uh, the German submarines here in the Cape, though I think that was not so much them being clever as to their opponents being stupid by not recognizing that was a threat and not really reacting to all of their convoys dying there. Yeah, the factions that players are in are set at the start. So it's always going to be Canada, Union, no sorry, Canada, USA, Australasia, no that's not true, Canada, USA, National France, Who's the fourth player? India. Dominion of India. Then they have a choice of either Sardinia or Australasia. The Reich's Pact is always Germany, Austria, Ukraine, and Bulgaria. Then a choice of either Sweden or S Poland. Then the third international is always Communist France, Union of Britain, Socialist Republic of Italy, CNTFAI, and then either Switzerland or... Ireland, and then the co-prosperity sphere is always Japan, Russia, Ventian, Siam, and then a choice of either Indochina or Philippines. Austria was okay, they had too much to do with the tanks and didn't have enough time for the navy. That's true. Like, when the Austrian navy was out, it was in a pretty... Uh, important position. They did have a couple of really, really nice naval engagements. But yeah, Austria just had a lot going on. An awful lot going on. What was the best navy fa player in each faction? You know what? That's actually a very good question. So let's just go to this so we can take a quick look at how the uh, the world is looking at this stage. Wow, the Entente is bloody huge. Interesting. Um, for the Entente, Australasia. 100%. For co-prosperity, none of them, frankly. For the Reichspact, split between Austria and Sweden. Sweden had the most invested into the navy, but they probably used it the least. Whereas Austria had the least invested into navy, but used it the most. And then Union of Britain was definitely for co-pro. Sorry, not Copro. That didn't. I was watching that. These guys just retreated manually when they- Oh, I see what they're trying to do. They're letting the tanks attack them, then they're retreating manually to hope f to, to, to try and drag the tanks out so that they could attack into it. But they're being so terrified of tanks defending a city, they have huge penalties when fighting in cities. The heavy tanks aren't the problem there, it's the infantry. Hello. Sorry, man. Okay, thank you. Um, so, ah, we're starting to see some heating up of battles here in India. We're finally starting to see some of the, what are they called? Japanese. 
I was trying to say Copro. Forces attacking into India. So if we just switch over to Copro right now, we can take a look at what exactly that is. And that is actually the Chinese pushing into the Himalayas and trying to take out some more of these territories. We also have Siamese units attacking across into Dhaka. So clearly the truce between these two factions is now over. Meanwhile, attacks elsewhere. Did India actually start fortifying this region? Uh, no. <laughs> well, kind of, I guess. They are moving. They've just spotted. Need to send two of them to attack and then two to go and pin that. Because they're going to go and reinforce it. Then you're attacking into mountains. Meanwhile, we also have a couple of Chinese units that have actually broken through the mountains just north of Srinagar. Uh, Peshawar, meanwhile, is under attack by a large consortium of units there. And then we also have Persian units. Lots and lots of Persian units on the borders with India, so they are not currently assaulting. One thing which I'm very interested in is, yeah, whether this is heating up. So we do have the... Insul India forces attacking into the Indian and American units in Java. It doesn't look like they're trying to counterattack, which I think is a bit of a mistake because I suspect the Entente does have the quality and the means needed to push out some more. Who got the Copro naval superiority in the Baltic for that invasion? Probably Russia, but it wouldn't have taken much because there were no Reichsbach fleets there. All it takes is like a submarine and you got superiority. I suspect it's just the Russian Baltic fleet, which probably just sat in port. Union of Britain player has been disqualified for throwing to the Entente because he basically let the Entente take the entirety of Britain undefended. Interesting. So UOB has been kicked. And apparently there is some work going on in Sri Lanka. Where Insul India took this for Japan. But it doesn't look like there's any other actions going out from there. Wow. A player actually disqualified. That's mad. Who was Britain's player again? I have to bear that in mind. Union of Britain's player was Ulala. So Ulala disqualified from the competition. Which I would assume sanctions them from ever joining another competition in the future. I'd honestly like to see a Rota 56 version of this competition. Um, yeah, possibly. I mean, Parts of Iron, I think, is a very good candidate for esports. Kaiserreich is definitely the long form. Kaiserreich is the test cricket, where Rota 56 or Vanilla especially would be more the 30-30 series. If we're using cricket analogies, I don't know why I am, because I don't particularly like the sport. Uh, it just seems like a reasonable one. Where Kaiserreich is like the long haul game, which takes days. Whereas a Hearts of Iron multiplayer, especially with people with decent internet, you could probably crack out in about 12 hours as opposed to the 8 plus 7, 13 hours, no, 15 hours that this took. Don't understand the rule break. It's because he gave, yeah. He allowed the Entente to fully occupy Britain without fighting back. As we saw, like, they ran rampant in Scotland and they didn't reassign any units to try and stop that. And obviously the admins have ruled that that was on purpose as opposed to just him being blind. So 
So I wonder what bearing that's going to have on the overall result, whether Scapa Flow then, and London possibly, is going to be awarded to the Reichspakt or not. Well, it really depends if there's like two points in it or not. Let's actually just take a quick look at the scores right now. Because these scores, as they stand right now, the Entente has 10 points, Reichspakt has 5. So if the Entente lost 2, they'd be down to 8, Reichspakt would be up to 7. If they had the whole of the Union of Britain. So yes, that could matter. Especially if Reichspakt now managed to take, for example, Paris. And just to confirm, I was once again asked not to look in certain areas, which is why we're we're looking it with great intensity at uh, other stuff going on. To be fair, Spain and France did very little for a long time versus the Entente. I mean, France didn't. Uh, sorry, Spain didn't even try to garrison there. Their country. Like, the entirety of Spain fell without a single unit there. None. So, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I think that, um... The... Third International is throwing. Oh, we've got a unit cut off here in the Himalayan mountains, so China trying to get to Kathmandu with this one unit. These guys could probably be assisting to add a little bit more weight to that attempt, but it doesn't look like they're trying very hard. Meanwhile, we do have more attacks in the north. It does look like these Indian units are starting to struggle really quite significantly at the moment. Paris would tie the game. Yeah, exactly. Constantinople is on the front line between Rice Pact and the Entente and is a victory point. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this is still a really close match, even with everything that's gone on thus far. And we've got 17 minutes remaining. 17 minutes. Which is why it's absolutely killing me that I'm not allowed to look in uh, certain areas of the world at the moment. Because it's all to play for. Oh, oh, oh. Naval stuff. Let, let's, let's do some naval stuff for a change, because we haven't really done much of that. So Australasia is currently doing their blockades, and there are lots of ships dying at the moment. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of ships dying. So let's just go over to this. We're going to take a look at the coast of Japan. They do have a heavy presence there. Mariana, Philippine Sea, East China Sea, South China Sea, loads of interceptions going on. They do have a fleet of 31 tier 3 submarines, and I'm going to assume that they are 3 engine with torpedoes and snorkels. I think that out here, the snorkels are potentially a bit of a waste. Um, I'd probably go with radar, considering that a lot of their actions are in the uh, Pacific, and you have a lot of just deep oceans, and you do not need the visibility reduction for submarines. But if you are trying to put them in, for example, the English Channel, then, yeah, sure, okay. However, Japan. How's it going? Japan is down to just six days of fuel. They have all of their convoys in use. They had, at one stage, 700, if not 800 convoys. They are down to 250. Their convoys are being absolutely hemorrhaged. 
at the moment. And their fuel is dramatically going down. They are trying to import a great deal from Russia, but basically all of it is being intercepted, which is crazy. Although apparently all of the Russian fuel is coming from that tiny island. Uh, I'm not sure that's true. Oh, of course, Vladivostok's transmitter is not Russia. And it doesn't look like um, Japan's really doing much work in terms of blockades. Oh no, they have blocked this. Okay, because you remember that all of the uh, the oil used to be coming from Archangel up here in the north of Russia, but Japan has finally blocked that. So it seems like there is a tiny port over here, which Russia is using to export everything uh, off the coast of Kamchatka, which seems a little bit questionable, as opposed to using Nikorvelsk, which is a level, it's a level one. This one's a level one. All right, fair enough. Uh, however, the Australasian submarines do seem to know about this, and they are sinking a bunch of convoys. There's 25 since we looked last, and the fuel is about to run out. Three, two, one. Empty. The air controller for the Co-Prosperity Sphere is out of fuel, and they ain't going to recover anytime soon. So Copro now has effectively no air support at all. And the massive Entente Air Forces that we have seen uh, flying over the skies of Germany and of France and of England are going to be able to do increasing amounts of damage. Meanwhile, the... Um, yeah, but what are they called? Chinese units are pushing south towards Delhi, probably going for the victory point in India. They are definitely making some inroads. We've got 14 minutes left of this game to play. There are still a number of different locations. Meanwhile, we have got... Paris has fallen to Germany. German troops have managed to take Paris. So that is another victory point going to the Reichspact and things are definitely heating up. Meanwhile, we've got an American naval invasion of Taiwan right now. Although it's only... No, no, it's an airborne invasion. Airborne invasion. Oh, I see what they're doing. They're running down the clock. Ha, huh, okay. So they tried the ah, yeah. wow, all right. I wonder if we're going to get injury time because of this. So basically what's happened here is they try to get Paris as late as possible so that the peace deal would occur with 15 minutes left of the game. Canada threatening to take the uh, French parts which Germany had taken control of. I think it's probably okay for us to look now, so I'm going to go and do that. Because I want to see the peace deal. Wasn't paying attention for a bit, so wait. Third International rolled over onto the Entente? Yeah, basically. 
Can't really blame someone for giving up when there is no longer a chance of winning. It's not about giving up, it's about throwing the game to a different team just because you don't like losing to the person who beat you. I have a huge problem with that. I have a really big problem with people who do that. I cannot stand on sporting behaviour. It pisses me off like nothing else. So I'm going to say big boo to the third international. I don't like the way you played. If you're losing, lose like a gentleman. Keep on fighting to the very last. Or a lady. I guess gaming the system is what we should expect from gamers. Are they dragging out the peace deal? I don't think they're necessarily dragging it out, but such a late day peace deal uh, when there are 10 minutes of the game remaining, definitely suspicious. This is definitely doing a last minute substitution and walking off the field as slowly as you possibly can. Now using football analogies of the type you play with your feet, you know, actual football. Although I assume that body ball does that too. You know, the the other football not played with the feet, but in body armor instead, hence body ball. It's a family joke. <laughs> yeah, this piece deal is being done pretty quickly. It's just curious about the timing as to when they actually decided to go for Paris. That was definitely planned, but they're doing the peace deal quickly enough. It's not obvious and blatant like um, time-wasting. Which could definitely be called. And as the the way the scores lie right now, Reichspact are winning with nine points, the Entente's eight. So who have they awarded London to? Entente's still London. I guess Scapa Flow is still Entente. So as things stand right now, with eight minutes to go, Reichspact victory. With Entente being just a point behind. And I am very pleased to report the Copro is actually going to come third. Third in is only on two points right now. Which football again? I know of three. That's true. There's also Aussie Rail, Aussie Rules and Gaelic football, aren't there? And rugby football, technically, if you want to give it its full title. And on that note, my kudos to all the players that do not give up but keep the game going. I often personally find that the most fun you can have is when you're the underdog like giving this bitter last stand defense not giving an inch for as long as you possibly can I've, I have massive respect to uh, people who do that <laughs> 